Rub up your engines! Tyler Stokes says, I got 09 Malibu, 90,000 miles. I don't think the tranny fluid has ever been changed or flushed. Should I do it? Well, one, definitely never flush it at all, period. It's got 90K and it's 12 years old. I wouldn't even change it as long as it works okay. Because with GM products, if they've gone that long and you decide it's time to change the fluid in the filter, sometimes they start slipping as soon as you do it because the old fluid is dirty. Dirty fluid has more friction. They shift by fluid friction. And if you put old dirty fluid out with a lot of friction and put new slippery fluid with less friction. I've seen them slip. I would just leave the thing alone if it works okay. Oh my God, it's Jose, he says. When buying a Chevy Cruze, would you recommend a 1.8 or the 1.4 turbo? Well, I wouldn't recommend any of them, to tell you the truth. If you were going to get one, get a diesel. At least the diesels weren't all that bad. But if you do have to get one between a 1.8 and a 1.4 turbo, get the 1.8 non-turbo. It will last longer. The turbos blow up on them. I wouldn't buy that car, period, anyways. But I mean, if you can get get one dirt cheap used. They can be a cheap car for knocking around it if you get it for almost nothing, but definitely don't buy a new one. You'd be pissing your money down the toilet. Well, if the car enthusiasts, do you think electric cars will last as long as the gas vehicles? Well, truthfully, if they are built correctly and maintained, they would last longer. There's less things to wear out. They're actually simpler vehicles. That's what kind of amazes me about old Elon Musk and a Tesla. He makes these super high-tech electric cars. They don't have to be. They're just a battery and an electric motor. No different than a toy car than we were kids with batteries and electric motors and a little remote to drive them around it. I mean, they're pretty simple vehicles. You don't have to make them complex. And since they don't have pounding pistons and explosions, they should, if they're made right, last even longer. But of course, you know, everything goes in this world of planned obsolescence. They're probably looking and going, okay, if we make these uh, motors with cheaper bearings in them, then they'll break when they have 140,000 miles. Then we can sell them more, yada, yada, yada. So they could last forever. But I doubt if they're going to build them to last forever, knowing how planned obsolescence and capitalism work hand in hand there. See, Amber 223 says, Scotty, what's the best place to buy a used sports car? I want to find one that isn't abused. Buy from an old person that don't, doesn't drive them hard. I had a customer ages ago, Mr. Bradley, and he bought one of those beautiful Mazda Miata. When it came out in a British racing green, he loved the car. He had it for like eight years. I think he put 30,000 miles on it and he sold it. That would have been a great one to buy. It was still a standard transmission, but he was in his 70s then and it didn't have any dings on it. And uh, that's the best way to get one. You don't want one from a young kid, that's for sure. And older people generally take care of stuff, plus they don't generally beat them as much too. You might start trying estate sales. <laughs> My grandson goes to all the estate sales looking for cars. Ray to the J says, so Scotty, I got an 08 Grand Caravan. I had it for five years. got 253,000 kilometers. I fixed minor things. Just got the intake manifold gasket replaced. You think it's worth keeping? All right. It's worn. You own it, right? And it's probably paid for. So what the heck? Keep driving it. If the transmission finally goes out, then you junk the thing. You're living on free money now anyways. You might as well see how long it lasts. You never know. I had a guy the other day bring me one of those things. It was burning a ton of oil and stuff, but he said, hey, I only paid three grand for it four years ago, and I still use it to go back in Clarksville to Nashville and back, which is like a hundred mile round trip. And he says, I got to put about a quart and a half of oil in every 200 miles. But he said, what the heck? You know, oil's cheap. And he just keeps driving it, so you never know. Marlene M says, hey, what do you think about my Daihatsu charade from 1982? All right, Daihatsu's were sold in the United States. They were a massive failure because Americans don't like little cars that are puddle jumpers is what they call them. They were okay cars. If you wanted a cheap little car to get around and you're the type of person who really maintains them, I got customers that bought Yugos and maintained them and they had 200,000 miles on. And most people think Yugos are the worst cars ever made. For the average American, they were because if you didn't take care of them, they'd fall apart. But if you religiously take care of your car, hey, it can be okay. The only problem with a Datsun Charade if you're in the United States, where are you going to get parts for it? Jason Robbins says, anything other than an ultrasonic device to keep rats out of cars. Yeah, I get a cat like I have. Rats don't like cats. Those ultrasonic devices actually do work. They do not like it. They will not go in. They hate that noise. You know, they'll go to the next corner neighbor car that doesn't make the noise. It's the easiest thing to do. Because if they ever get in your car, especially in the winter, if you're up north, it's got residual heat when you shut it off. Ooh, the rats say, here comes a nice cozy place to make a nest. And I mean, you can park it in your garage if you got a totally sealed garage and rats can't get in. But realize, rats can get in a space that's the size of their skull. And their skulls aren't that big. They can squeeze in little holes. So you might park it in a garage, but the rat's probably going to find its way in. Plus, they have teeth they can chew holes in the wood and make their own hole just to get in. <laughs>
Corey Mayo says, afternoon, Scotty. Should I put a used Japanese transmission in a U.S. 2002 Honda Accord? Only if it fits. I can't tell you if it's going to fit or not. Now, the engines, you can put them in, but you have to change things. Like sometimes you have to change the oil pan because it doesn't fit. You often have to change the intake or the exhaust manifold because they don't fit. And sometimes the software doesn't fit. You'd have to ask somebody who actually did it on your exact year model and find out what the transmission you're buying came out of. Of, and that's the only way you're going to know because they do make quite a bit difference as the ones they sell in Japan. I've done the engines, but never the transmission. So I can't say myself. I asked somebody who has done it. Owen Sense and Scotty got 011 Honda Civic. Only the rear windows don't roll down. What do you think is the problem? Well, uh, motors and regulators can wear it over time, but here's something you want to try. Because when I bought my wife's Lexus, one of the rear windows didn't roll down. And when I priced this five, six hundred dollars of parts, I thought, hmm, let's try this. So what I did was I told my wife, I said, start the car up and push the left passenger power window to go down. It wouldn't go down, but it said, keep your finger on that button. I opened the left passenger door and I slammed it. And when I slammed it, guess what? It started to work again. Then with it rolled down, I got some silicone spray and I sprayed the front and back runner of the electric windows. It was stuck because it wasn't used much. The windows ride on those little rubber eaves front and back. And if you lubricate it with silicone, that actually fixed it. Now I do have to say about a year and a half later, I was bad and I didn't lubricate it and it did it again. So I slammed it and I lubricated it. Now I got to remember when it gets warm out again here in Tennessee, I'm going to lubricate all four of them again just so it doesn't stick. So it could just be they're sticking. So try the old hold it down, slam the door if it goes down. Once it goes down, get spray silicone, spray it, watch my video, and that could easily fix it for nothing. Randy Ramirez says, my tire pressure monitoring light on my 09 2.4 liter Accord stays on. I check tire pressure at least once every three weeks. Do you think the system could be out? Yeah, I can just about guarantee you out. You're talking about what? That's a 12 year old Honda Accord. The way those stupid tire pressure monitoring systems work on those in most modern cars is each wheel has a valve stem. That's where you put the air in, right? Inside the valve stem is a little broadcast system, just like a radio station. And it tells the computer in the car what the pressure is of all tires. And guess how it works? There's a battery inside each valve stem. And as they age, the batteries go dead and they don't work anymore. Then you got to take the tires apart, buy new valve stems, then have them reprogrammed by a guy like me who has a machine to say, here's the new ones. Let's reprogram them. Keep using your air pressure gauge. They work even better than those computerized nonsense things do. And it won't cost you five bucks. It won't cost you anything because you said you're ready to check them. So you already got the tire gauge. That's the problem with those systems. To get all the batteries go dead and they're inside. You got to take the tire apart, replace the whole unit. It's an expensive endeavor. Nate says, I put a new bulb in the front headlight of my car. It worked a few days and then it went bad. What could be wrong? All right. I even made a video about this. Do not, under any circumstances, buy the cheap Chinese made replacement light bulbs. Like uh, Ford has Auto Light, right? Well, there's one like Auto Lit that the Chinese make. And I had a customer buy the whole headlight assembly and it came with those Auto Lit bulbs in them. I put them in. Two of them didn't work as soon as I plugged them in and one of them burned out in 10 minutes. Make sure you get quality bulbs. Go to a place where they have quality bulbs like GE or whatever. And if you go to a place like like AutoZone say, we got the cheap ones, we got the more expensive ones. Buy the more expensive ones and ask them what the warranty is because they usually have a pretty good warranty at places like AutoZone. Now, if you do put a good one and it burns out, then you have an electrical short somewhere and either the ground or the power wire has gone bad. And when they go bad, then they take too much power to go through the bad part and that extra power burns the headlights out real fast. Normally, though, it's just a cheap light bulb made in China. I see that all the time. Diego T says, Scotty, what do you think about a Dodge Charger for a first car? Well, if you're a teenager, it may be your last car because you may finish yourself off. Those are extremely fast cars, especially if you get one that's got the Hellcat 700 something horsepower engine in it, right? They're fun to drive. They have horrible resale value and they're Dodges, so they fall apart anyway. And with a big engine like that, generally people drive them like maniacs, so they're going to fall apart even faster. But if you're young, like I say, or if you don't know how to drive that well, it may be your last car because they are extremely fast. And if you going extremely fast and you run into a tree or something, that can be it for you. And it will be your last car. First and last car. Deuce Vault says, Scotty, should I leave planet Earth to get away from it all and resettle on Mars? Now, there isn't much oxygen on Mars. You ever watch that uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? It's not a happy place to be. And they claim anybody that goes there, it's a one-way ticket. So I don't think it'd be something that I'd want. You know, you might think it's bad here, but it's probably horrendous there. Don't think the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.